Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and uh, today we're uh, in my office and uh, yeah I've just spent the last few days um, having a bit of a tidy up and a clear out in here um, as you can remember I've done a few video, a few of my videos from my office but it was in a bit of a mess, the desk was far too cluttered um, and I couldn't get anything really done in here so um, yeah I spent a couple of days actually ripping it all out and uh, putting it all back in again as you can see my uh, I now have uh, some more space my desk is actually clear I do have some stuff still on it I know but uh, yeah it's a lot better and a lot nicer than it was anyway um, the reason I've done this um, one thing I wanted to get my um, tape player um, going again and um, another thing is I want to actually do some proper decent editing on some of my videos I want to do some slightly better quality videos I've got an absolute ton of footage that I've filmed over the last few months of various projects from uh, Sinclair Spectrums, um, ZX81s all uh, some BBC stuff um, you name it I've got all sorts of uh, videos that I've done I've done the footage too uh, but I have been struggling like hell with um, that there, which is uh, my editing PC. Well, my it's a Mac. It's um, an old iMac. Um, I picked up for not a lot of money, and um, I used to use Final Cut Pro on it. But problem with that Mac is uh, its hard drive's not huge. It's only uh, about two hundred gig, and it's only got a gig of RAM in it, and try as I might, I can't find a sensible price for um, big RAM for it, I mean there's no point putting just one more gig in it, I'd want to go up to like 4 gig in it and what people want for 4 gig of RAM to fit that um, is more than I paid for the computer in the first place so uh, yeah I decided um, I wouldn't go that route and I've sorted a PC out but we'll come to that in, um, in a bit, what I thought I'd show you first is this this here is my uh, Pioneer and it's a um, the RT707 I actually um, I rate this out of a skip at uh, one of the venues I uh, used to work at uh, originally it was used as the um, in, to play the interval music in the venue uh, and sur surreptitiously record artists even when they didn't want to but we won't go into that that was back in the 70s that was uh, what the uh, one of the old engineers um, told me uh, they used to do bootlegging Frank Sinatra and things like that uh, using uh, this very machine. Um, but uh, we won't go into that. Yeah, it was uh, one day I was um, arriving at work and there was a big skip outside because they decided to um, have a clear out of some old storerooms and uh, this literally was uh, in the top of the skip. Sadly, it is. It did uh, receive some damage. That shaft there is bent, where it had been literally thrown into the skip, uh, which is a shame. It does still work, but uh, I have always thought, should I try straightening it, shouldn't I? The problem is, if I try and straighten it, there's a chance I'll break that shaft off. So, as it works, until I can get a new um, hub assembly, uh, that'll have to stay bent. But uh, the second quality on this is absolutely uh, fantastic. Um, I'll just uh, show you actually, uh, I've got it all set up at the moment, so if we uh, start it playing and I've got it set up through my mixing desk, so let's just give that a bit of a level and I mean this tape I haven't got a clue, is it? I got a big box of tapes off someone um, ages ago and I'm going through them at the moment so God knows what this tape was recorded on. It's a they're on Ferrograph reels, so it may have even been a Ferrograph. But yeah, and we can. Uh, it's got auto reverse on it. Twin speed. So yeah, that's. Uh, I'm really pleased I've got that um, all set up and working again. And I've got it. I'll uh, just take you off the cam, off the tripod actually, so we can show you some of this stuff a bit better. I will show you my uh, mixing desk. All the pretty much all this kit in here was either free because it was out of skips, or 
it didn't cost me uh, very much at all. Um, it's all junk picked stuff. I don't really like spending money. <laughs> to be honest, I'd rather uh, get something broken and repair it myself than um, spend on uh, full price stuff. So yeah, that's my uh, Pioneer tape deck and I've got that connected to that, <coughs> which is a uh, Spirit Folio. Not a, it's not a big desk, it's a, um, a very basic analogue mixing desk. But um, again, um, I got that from a, um, was doing an install in a uh, council, it was actually a council chamber. And um, that had been installed by the uh, previous installers. And it had been hacked to pieces. Um, all the mutes on it had been bypassed off the desk and um, rigged to an external control panel. So people could, so um, someone sat behind this desk could mute and unmute people's mics. Why they couldn't just have built the desk into where their control position, where their position was, I don't know. But that's how they'd done it. It was all built into a console, uh, console in the in a back room, and we uh, ripped this all out and replaced it with a computerized system with um, touch panels. Um, work uh, it would have basically with all the hacking about they'd done on it um, I did have a look at recommissioning it for the company I worked for at the time just as a spare desk but there was um, at least four or five hours in just um, undoing all the work and getting all the mutes to work back on it as it was intended so uh, the, um, we decided it wasn't worth it um, they did keep the power supply from it uh, because we did used to use these um, spirit folio desks in some of our rigs so we kept the power supply as a spare and um, I brought this home with me and I spent the four or five hours um, reversing all their um, rework on it and turning it back into a desk I obviously I didn't have the power supply for it and it was built into a console so uh, I don't have the side pieces for it I. Uh, I'll show you down here. I actually built it a power supply. That thing there is its power supply. It's complete and total overkill. It is the most over this that sound desk pulls about 800 milliamps. And uh this thing's good for about five amps. But um all it needs that desk is um an AC uh, 18 0 18 volt supply. And uh that's an old camera PSU off um one of our um cameras uh, that long since dead um, and that originally produced I think it was um, 24 volt DC uh, un unregulated unsmooth 24 volt DC but I had a look at the tappings inside it and uh, I, re uh, I rehashed the tappings in it and I managed to get 18018 out of it so that now uh, powers, my, uh, powers my sound desk in here the reason I've got a sound desk in here is I've got lots and lots of different um, audio um, inputs like the tape deck, uh, obviously um, computers, um, you name it, um, that I can just plug into there. I don't have to go messing around looking for um, different leads. I can just, uh, everything's on the top there. I can plug anything I want into it, whether it's a microphone, whether it's a piece of professional kit, whether it's like one of my um, cassette tape players, that uh, video player, you name it. I can uh, connect it through that desk there and the desk will eventually um, drop its record audio out to uh, this PC here now this is what is going to replace my Mac uh, I built this a few years ago and then uh, promptly uh, when my business partner's um, main editing computer died um, and he couldn't at the time afford to replace it um, I loaned him that. It's a i7, uh, 3.4 gig um, i7 with 8 gigs of RAM in it. It's not got a shit hot graphics card or anything in it. It really does need a better graphics card in it. Um, but that is what I'm going to use for my uh, video editing from now on once I've got some suitable software on it. And um, also recording, um, I do do some tape transfer stuff for people, so if people send me old reel-to-reel -reel tapes, I'll drop them down onto a digital format for them. I do the same with video and video 8 and all sorts of stuff like that, just a sideline of mine. Uh, but the intention is that that will be connected to uh, that PC, for, and all this equipment will be connected to that PC, so I can always record it down to um, digital on there. Uh, now what I'm using for monitoring, what we can actually hear playing in here is what's rather nice. 
Uh, again, this is trash pick stuff. This is being in the industry I'm in. Um, occasionally little gems like this and you can't let them down. What we've got, my amplifier that I've got all this set up to is a uh, Quad 303. Now if you're into your audio, uh, you'll know what that is. It's probably one of the best solid state power amps out there. Not hugely powerful, it's about 30 watt. But um, the sound quality on that is just sublime. I absolutely love that amplifier. And what's even better is what um, what's on the other end of it. Because what we've got back there, now if you are a real audiophile, you'll know what these are. These are, uh, I'll just get you there, those are LS3s, Rogers LS3s, and no, they're not reissues, they are original, 19, late 1960s, um, possibly early 1970s, Rogers LS3 uh, monitor speakers, um, they are the BBC spec ones, and they are, both of them, consecutive serial numbers, matched pair. Um, they're worth a, <laughs> I don't think what they're actually worth. Um, I've seen um, a set go for um, quite a few thousand pound. And uh, again, I rate them out of a skip uh, together with the um, amplifier there. Yes, yeah, so uh, that is my um, office um, audio setup as it is now. And um, hopefully now with um, all this... Uh, set up I should I should hopefully as soon as I get some spare time be able to um, take all that stock footage that I've um, recorded and um, get it down onto um, get it down onto the computer and actually get some uh, more of my videos uploaded to YouTube so uh, I'll leave it at that for now like I say it was just a bit of fun this just show you what I've uh, got in my um, office so uh, thanks for watching and uh, goodbye